Tonight, the town council in Elizabeth City, North Carolina, releasing this surveillance video as the Pasqua Tank SWAT team converged on Andrew Brown. The angle does not show what happened next. It's Brown's like family scared. today. But you need to talk about the assassination. Concluding he was assassinated by deputies. It was a kill shot to the back of the head. Brown, who was driving his car at the time, was shot to death six days ago as deputies served an arrest warrant for allegedly selling illegal drugs. Andrew did not get his due process. The county medical examiner has now issued a death certificate, writing Andrew Brown died a result of a penetrating gunshot wound of the head. The family commissioned their own private autopsy. It shows Brown was first shot four times in the right arm, the final bullet that killed him to the back of his head. The Pasquotank Sheriff issuing a statement today that says in part a private autopsy is just one piece of the puzzle. An independent investigation is being conducted by the state. On Saturday, the sheriff said he supported the release of all the body cameras. We want the body camera footage made public. But a close reading of what was just filed with the court now shows the sheriff only asks that the recordings be released to Khalil Farabee, the adult son of Mr. Brown. Yesterday, the Farabee and his attorneys were allowed to watch only one 20-second body cam clip. Right. And what did you see? Uh, execution. Execution. Yes. Describe it. It's horrific. You know, you see a person trying to get away and the cops shooting at them. You know, that's not right. Peace, family. Vicki Dillard here. So pleased that you tuned in to African Diaspora News Channel and our affiliates. Thank you so much for joining us on this amazing platform. As you come in, please make sure that you come in and give us a thumbs up, like, and share this broadcast. Would you, dear family, I do have unfortunately, a very important war briefing to share with you today. Now, dear family, I want to say first and foremost, whenever you hear me give you a briefing and we're discussing the realities of black life, never think for one second that I'm piling on with the trauma, because I know that a lot of this can be triggering for some of us. But what I want you to understand, understand and overstand is that we're at war. There is no context of black life that you should see outside of that reality, that we're at war. And members of the oppressive class, members of the dominant society weaponize everything, including your music, including your education, your family, law enforcement, money, water, food. There is no area or thing that your open enemy or the oppressive class doesn't... Uh, seek to weaponize. And so we have to discuss these things so that we're intelligent and know how to best respond in order for us to win the war. And so family, you're involved in a war, black family, whether you want to be or not. How many of you all know that in the military, there's a such thing as voluntary and involuntary or draft, being drafted into war? You may not want to be in battle, but if somebody's shooting at you, guess what? You're engaged in conflict. And the question is, what are you going to do about it? And are you going to pay attention to these incidents and finally make a decision as a collective that we are going to act and operate as a nation within a nation, that we are, we're are we going to make our neighborhoods safe and decent places to live? We're going to do as much as we can to really, really transition into educating our own babies, doing as much business with each other as possible policing our own communities, resolving our own issues. This is important because what we're finding is your pleas to the oppressor to let up off you isn't working. I find it fascinating when some of your street politicians and other conscious folks and black bootleg bootlicks types keep pushing a Breonna Taylor's new law and George Floyd law and our family, look, look, is so nonsensical because some of our black family that was murdered and gunned down and lynched were complying with the law. So how is it that you're trying to push another law as if that's the answer for us realizing black liberation? It just doesn't make any sense. In fact, it's another excuse for us to hold on another year, another decade, another century, 
And after dealing with this beast for 466 years, you got to be out of your mind if you think that we, the black grassroots, are just going to sit back and push things that we know don't work. Now, you know, I don't teach recklessness. I don't teach you um, to unnecessarily uh, be aggressive. I don't do that. However, I'm asking white America a question, especially when it comes down to our brother Andrew Brown Jr. If you're not going to give us justice in the prosecutor's office, if you're not giving us justice with law enforcement, if you're not giving us justice with the White House, no justice with Congress, no justice in the courts, no justice economically, no justice medically. What are you trying to get us to do? If the areas of uh, the places of redress where the law says we ought to be getting redress. That's once again, it's the law that we supposed to be able to go to court. We don't get justice. So why are we sitting here talking about pushing and advocating a new law as if that's the end all be all? You look crazy. Reading to you now from an NBC News report. The family got their own autopsy done. Guess what they found? Andrew Brown Jr. was shot five times. Once in the back of the head, according to the family backed autopsy. Did you all hear what I just said? According to one of his attorneys, he says that Mr. Andrew Brown Jr. was a 42 year old black man, black father of seven. He was gunned down by police in North Carolina as he was allegedly driving away from them, posing no danger to officers. Police have not released much information about the incidental body cam footage, but we know a warrant is not a weapon for cops to use to decide right or wrong. Let me tell y'all something. Some of you all's inner Sambo, some of your inner shucking, your, your inner shucking job, your inner mammy, you sitting up here thinking to yourself, well, if they was there to affect a warrant, then you automatically think it negative of your brother. Are you out of your mind? In white supremacist war, there is no demilitarized zones. There's no neutral areas where we give our enemy the benefit of the doubt. Under no circumstances would any alleged warrant be justification for executing your brother. Moreover, many people are saying that there's a cover up that's going on right now because they refuse to lease, release all of the footage. Apparently, there's a city video that, 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 um, that caught it, but they're not releasing that. My understanding is that Mr. Brown also had a security system, a camera system in his house uh, that he was renting. And according to some reports, uh, the, the property owner says that they removed the cameras. The family was expected to take their attorney in to view the video only for the officials to renege and not allow even their attorneys in. They only allowed a couple of family members in and the family members took notes and they only showed them, watch this, 20 seconds. Did you hear what I said? They only showed them 20 seconds. And according to the family members that witnessed the video footage of their loved one being murdered, they said his hands were on the wheel. And for those of you that are sitting there saying, well, he shouldn't have fled. Let me tell you a funny looking self something. According to the autopsy, Four of the shots were in his arm. His son said during the press conference that he was literally trying to save his own life. So to the degree he fled, it's believed. And of course, more information comes out. So I always give that disclaimer. We're waiting on more information. But based on what we know now and based on even what his son said after viewing the 20 second video, because they haven't showed him all the video. They only gave him 20 seconds of it. His father was fighting for his own life. And to find that, obviously, the fifth one landed in the back of his head. I'm reading now from this AJ Plus that says how U.S. police are committing crimes against humanity, against black Americans, says international rights experts. Somebody say we know that. They want an ICC investigation. The report calls out disproportionate killings of black people, racially targeted stops, torture practices, and culture of impunity. Family, what are you going to do? Are we finally going to do for self 
resolve our business and try to get as far away from this oppressive class as possible? Or are you going to keep playing this sick, twisted game with them and giving them the chance to come up with some new law? We don't need new laws. There are plenty of laws on the book. They're just not enforcing those laws, family. This is a shame, but it's up to us what we're going to do. Family, thank you so much for tuning in to today's brief war briefing. Make sure that you sign up for my weekly mastermind, clubvicky.com, for only $1, clubvicky.com. Once a week, I drop spiritual jewels. You have exclusive access to me to ask questions, and you have access to all kinds of good, yummy um, lectures from past uh, sessions. Clubvicky.com, club, V-I-C-K-I, for $1. Follow me on Instagram at Vicky X Dillard, and follow me on Twitter at Dillard Vicky. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hey, brothers, I want to tell you about a website called blackmenszone.com. Now, Black Men's Zone is a site that specifically targets black men. It's a place where black men talk about issues that solely affect them. Now, at Black Men's Zone, the topics will range from news to society, sports, technology, business, food and recipes. You know, some you know, you know brothers got to cook, too. Gaming, and some of your brothers like doing some of that. Health and fitness, you know, got to get your workout on. Music, movies, and many other topics. Now, there's not many forums around these days for black men, and because black men have to create them. Now, this particular website is more of a forum based, something simple, not social media. You could write what you need to write, say what you need to say, get on, get off pretty quick. But if you're interested, brothers, to at least go there and I want you to check it out, engage in the topics, go to blackmenzone.com, sign up for an account and get engaged in the conversation. Thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out the African Diaspora News Channel app in the Google Play and Apple App Store.